I was on Twitter and somebody asked me, what's the story behind this? So, why don't we find out? It's often incorrectly called the Princess Parkway, but this is part of Princess Road. Now, the section we're looking at here today opened in 1971, several years after the Mancunian Way, and just in time for the opening of the, uh, shall we say, less than successful Hume 5 project. Hume 5, for those who don't know, was a massive housing estate developed by the city of Manchester. It was one of the biggest public housing projects in Europe. Unfortunately, poor building quality and corner cutting in costs caused it to become one of Manchester's most notorious no-go areas. The history of the Crescent is well documented, I'm not going to cover that. We're here to discuss the road aspect, which was the Princess Road motorway. So what was actually planned and what did we get? When opened in 1971, the Princess Road extension only ran for about half a mile. This connection allowed traffic to go from Medlock Street down towards the existing Princess Road and therefore through Alexandra Park, Moss Side, down through Fallowfield and onto the uh, Princess Parkway. What this meant is that this tiny little half mile stretch of dual carriageway became one of the most important roads in the entire city of Manchester. At the centre of this design were the on and off slips which enabled traffic to come to and from Bonsall Street. The southern end was designed to tie into the unbuilt Manchester inner ring road which will form part of another video. As you can also see from this old map the line of Stretford Road was demolished to create the Hume Walk footbridge which is better known as the Joy Division Bridge. <laughs> Picture the scene, it's now the early 1990s, Hume 5 is by all accounts nothing but a massive headache for Manchester City Council, there is an absolutely wonderful alternative scene developing down there, but it's not what the City Council want for this city of the 21st century. Manchester now has a huge problem on its hands because a vast area of land next to the city centre is effectively a no-go area for what they deem to be ordinary people, and therefore something needs to be done. Well, the plan is had an answer to that. You do what you did in the 1960s, you knock it down and you start again. This slip road was the first to be abandoned. This one actually went in the early 90s before the Hume scheme really kicked off. The reason being for that was that Green Hayes Lane was finally widened and it was brought down to a new massive signal junction which the original layout didn't cover. When they did close this slip road, they didn't do a very good job of getting rid of it. In case you're wondering what all the railings are for, pedestrians used to be banned from this area. It was only when the slip roads were closed to traffic, or modified as it were, that that ban was lifted. And that's why you can walk here today. The southern end of this then, the Green Haze Junction, which is absolutely massive and absolutely awful, is a modern 1990s signal junction. Originally, the two carriageways just used to rejoin and go into a single carriageway here. The next step was to reintroduce Stratford Road, which meant building the Hume Arch, and this required even more changes to the existing slip roads. As you can see by the abandoned barrier here, the original slip roads ran at a slightly different level to what's there today. This is what caused the slip roads to be closed to traffic in the first place. However, at the time, the old Bonds Hall Street flyover was still in its dual carriageway configuration, and signs still said you could turn left and right even though you couldn't. The northbound slip roads have a bit more of a potted history. The exit slip road was actually closed for quite a long time, only allowing access to what is now Phoenix Way. This was later remedied by opening up a link through to the Manchester Metropolitan University Burley campus. And as you can see, the result is a slip road that looks a bit of a mess. Well, I think that just about wraps up this tour of the Princess Road Canyon. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. You can follow me on Twitter at showmeasignbrin.